The United Nations has declared a famine in two areas of southern Somalia as the country suffers its worst drought in more than half a century. The suffering in the Horn of Africa is heartbreaking. Mohammed is eight months old and close to dying from hunger. In a desperate attempt to wrestle him from the arms of death, his father walked for four days from famine-stricken South Somalia to the capital Mogadishu, searching for help. For many of Somalia's children, it's a race against time. These children have survived days in the desert with little or nothing to eat. They've made it to a refugee camp in Kenya. Most of them are severely malnourished. Despite the treatment they're receiving, many of them won't survive. U.S. estimates suggest the drought and famine have already killed close to 30,000 children younger than five years old. Meanwhile, the U.N. says over half a million Somali children are acutely malnourished on the brink of starving to death. Tens of thousands of refugees have fled south-central Somalia in hopes of finding food at camps in Ethiopia, Kenya and in the capital Mogadishu. It's estimated that 1,500 refugees come to camps in Kenya every day. Many of them have walked more than 100 miles from Somalia to Kenya, driven from their homes by drought, hunger and conflict. But not everyone will survive the journey. This man's wife died before they reached Kenya. <laughs> And the reason why he left his home country is because of famine. On the way to Dinsor, the mother of the child died in between, in a place called Barawe, and the mother was buried. He continued his journey throughout. His story is similar to other families fleeing Somalia, as parents have been forced to choose which child to bring and which to leave behind. We're hungry, we're thirsty. Some children died on our way here and we had to leave them on the roadside. You can see for yourself how we're managing. We're suffering. I've lost two children in this camp and the three I have left are sick. We have nothing and we're hardly getting any help. Getting aid to those in need in Somalia has been made more difficult by the continued fighting in the country. The Al-Qaeda-linked militant group, the Al-Shabaab, controls much of the country's most desperate areas. Al-Shabaab has denied that a famine is taking place, refusing to give access to the world's biggest provider of food aid, the World Food Programme. The Al-Qaeda-linked group has set up its own food distribution camp, seizing the opportunity to exert more power over the people. We collect money from the rich and give to the poor. We don't need aid organizations to give us anything. They use it as a propaganda tool. The only safe mode of transportation for UN workers is armored vehicles manned by machine gun wielding peacekeepers. Can you show me where Al-Shabaab is now? Okay, you, you see uh, the sandbag and the Hisco barriers yeah. under that, the, 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 that, that the building. Ah, now, now it's, uh, it is the... Uh, okay, okay. But despite the threat of violence, aid workers have vowed to get food to Somalia's most hungry. We're hopeful that uh, we can push further into southern Somalia in the coming days and weeks. We have to try. We can't uh, not try. It's just too serious. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been donated to fight the hunger crisis. But the UN says it needs hundreds of millions more. $300 million is needed to address the famine in the next two months. This is a rough estimate, and the number will probably increase as the number of people in need rises. We're calling on the world to really back operations to scale up 
very quickly to reach those in the epicenter in the famine conditions in southern Somalia. It's very dangerous and risky, but we have to reach people. They're not making it all the way here to Mogadishu. These are the ones lucky enough to make it here, and even these feeding centers are overrun. The UN says it's a long-term intervention and the money received now will do more than just feed. It will also be used to help the people put their lives back together. The current situation can only be alleviated if we make sure that the people remain where they are. And if we create the condition for the people to go very fast back to produce their own food instead of de depending on support from others. If we don't give hope to the people, people will move out and the disaster will spread around and multiply by a factor that we will never be in condition to control. Over 11 million people in the Horn of Africa are reaching out for help, hoping the world will hear and respond before it's too late. Reporting for Live at 7, I'm Keneal Gale.